Over. I am the Martian Ambassador. Des Moines and all of Central Iowa, welcome to Max World Live. Max World is your world. Every day we talk about the issues and topics that matter most to you. And as always, it's your voice we want to hear in Max World. So join the conversation by calling 515-244-0077. And now, here's the host of Max World Live, J. Michael McCoy. Thank you, Mr. Announcer Man. I appreciate you doing my opening. <laughs> Seven minutes after uh, 4 o'clock on this 16th, I'm sorry, 19th day of October in the Lord's Year 2015. I'm J. Michael McCoy. Welcome to Hour 2 of uh, Max World Live here on our very first day of a two-hour broadcast. And uh, I, I, I wasn't going to say anything in the beginning of the hour because we had a wonderful guest here who told her story about Jesus. But 50 minutes before I was supposed to be here for the 3 o'clock show, I had a car accident. was not my fault. I am obviously not hurt. I can't believe how it was a – I drive a sedan, so a lower-sitting car. Right. And a very nice woman, very nice, uh, had drove a, a, an Alexis SUV, so it kind of sits up higher, took out the whole back end of my car, and I bet she wasn't going 10 mile an hour. Now, that probably says something about my cheap car. <laughs> but, and her car had no damage. Wow. None. So now I get to find out what it's like to work with uh, uh, a different insurance company, because this will be their insurance company. But... Uh, it, it's kind of messed me up mentally. You know? It's it's hard to recover from that, whether you have a uh, physical injury or not. The emotional shakiness of it. I've only been in a handful of accidents, and it just it rattles you emotionally. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm impressed that you were able to do a radio show. It just uh, goes to your ability to be a consummate professional. Man. He was scarred emotionally today. See, was and, he really? Yeah, yeah. and and. Th that's who you would have been left with right there right here <laughs> so did you really think i was going to leave you high and dry on thank day you one thank you so much Frank for that that's right that's right it's a big day i mean i i one day i'm not going to show up and i want to hear bob and frank do a show all by themselves we're going to call it bob's corner bob's, bob's corner. corner yeah, yeah. I see. <laughs> all right um uh let's start with uh, some local news that i want to tell you about um it just amazes me, um, the crime that we have in Des Moines, Iowa. Now, I would imagine if there's somebody living in Houston, Kansas City, Minneapolis, uh, Chicago, Wichita, I, I don't know, maybe they have more. Obviously, you get to a Chicago, they have more. Sure. But I am sometimes amazed at, uh, uh, <laughs> and I just, just stupid, just stupid people. So listen to this. Okay, Dateline, Des Moines. I'm getting this out of the register. Uh, Monday's register. All right. So a guy gets out of Mercy Hospital. Okay. Uh, he doesn't say why he was there, but he, he got discharged. He goes outside and he lives six blocks away and he doesn't want to walk home. Now, understand this was, uh, this was uh, Friday around uh, uh, mid-morning. So okay. I don't know if you remember, Friday was a nice day. It was a beautiful day. Beautiful, six blocks. He didn't want to walk it. So guess what he did? Frank, what do you think he did? He stole a bicycle. No. Bob, what did he do? Hitchhiked. No. What did he do? Called the cab, called Uber. Well, he kind of called the cab. Cab was sitting there in front of the hospital. Yeah. Empty. <laughs> so he stole the <laughs> no. cab. Keys in the ignition. <laughs> oh, no. He stole the cab, drove it six blocks to his home, and when the police showed up, he still had the, the keys to the taxi in his pocket. Wow. Now, I, I, <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And, and, you know, they didn't say he was mentally impaired. They didn't say anything like that. Anyway, I'm just really That's surprised. hilarious. That's hilarious. We had a uh, uh, quick trip. Uh, got robbed over the weekend again over there on Frank's side of town. Frank, are you are you this bandit? Are you the quick trip bandit? <laughs> are you the quick trip bandit that puts I, on the mask? I hope not. I hope not either. I hope they're not listening to come up and arrest you. I was figuring that guy that took the taxi cab may have done us a favor and, and nabbed Ed Fallon's bicycle. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so you know what an ATV is? Yeah. 
all-terrain vehicle? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> there are people in Iowa who are trying to get them banned from the streets. Now, this is just a general... Now, is this... When you say ATV, is that any all-terrain vehicle like a Jeep Wrangler or something like that? Or no, are no, these no. the four-wheelers, right? I think... The, I four-wheelers. Think these are the four-wheelers. Yeah, these are like the Gators and the... Well, let me give you a caveat to that in my neighborhood. Yeah, your neighborhood. I know. Okay, down by he the... He lives south of Grand. Uh, down by the interstate, <laughs> there has been some people known to ride AD, ATVs and have mobile meth labs. And on, on, on the ATV? Well, they you? use the ATV wow. to get out to their mobile meth lab, or they move it out there, and they produce their meth. So we had some Polk County sheriffs coming out into our neighborhood, going down into the cornfields, down into the old strip mines by the interstate on ATVs to track and catch catch these guys. Wow. So so if someone's riding around in an ATV, is that the thing? They're assuming they're a part of this meth ring or something? I don't know, but they want to ban them from public roads. And, you know, uh, for instance, the John Deere Gator, okay, that's a that's a small vehicle. It's probably bigger than a smart car. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it's obviously smaller than a small pickup. How fast do these things get? Because when I'm thinking a four-wheeler, a typical four-wheeler, I don't want to be driving that down a city street. They, they rip. They can go. They go fast. They, and they go fast? Oh, yeah. Up to 75 mile an hour. <laughs> so they can go wherever they want. But wow. now, now they want to ban them from public roads. What do you think about that, Frank? Do you think they should ban them? Are they even, can they be licensed for street use? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. They, John Deere especially makes a vehicle with turn indicators, makes a vehicle with uh, 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 what you need as far as brake lights, headlights. Absolutely. That's Most, not much different than a motorcycle. Most yeah. of the ones oh, that I, I see, see going I see. around my neighborhood aren't licensed, and they're usually going down to the old strip mines in uh, cornfields by the interstate, and I suspect they're playing around with meth because in some mushroom hunting episodes, I have found multi-empty packs of Sudafed in these areas. Oh, goodness. goodness. What kind of neighborhood do you live in? <laughs> the Wild West, I was apparently. Gonna say, I was going to say. All right. And the last thing, uh, we do have uh, a body has been found in a trunk. This is in eastern Iowa, but they are somehow uh, linking it back to central Iowa. Uh, they believe they've identified the body in the truck, or the trunk, excuse me, uh, but details have not yet, uh, not yet been released. So uh, that's coming from the Channel 8 website. By the way, I'll always, when we talk about news items, I will always tell you where my source is. I don't want you to think for one minute that I work that hard. Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm just not a reporter anymore. It's not my let – me, let me tell you something. If I act like a reporter on something, you're going to enjoy that as a listener because that means that something really got my goat and I wanted to find out the truth. And so I got out my uh, – my uh, uh, what, what was the guy's name on Superman? Jimmy Olsen hat yeah. and my pad, and I uh, went out there to get him. All right. So uh, you have a wonderful theological question. And uh, I think that's a great question. Get, pose that question to us again. Well, um, my question is to to all of us, to our listeners especially, but to any anyone really, when as a believer you get in those moments in your life where it becomes difficult to believe, doubt, doubt raises its ugly head, and you think, I don't know that there is a God. Now, maybe I'm the only Christian in the whole world that's ever felt that way. But I have felt that way. And I look for ways, places, I look for a way to see God, to know that God is real. And I, I will tell you that I'm a, I'm a fairly, conser I'm a Presbyterian, I'm a conservative guy, I'm not looking for signs and wonders, I'm not looking for miraculous, I'm just looking for natural evidences of God. And I was just curious, uh, maybe we can go around the room here, what is it that you guys go to when you're in those moments, or do you even have those moments? Frank, have you ever had uh, doubt? All the time. Yeah. Uh, well, not so much doubt in God, but sometimes personal doubt whether he's so concerned about what's going on in my life. Yeah. But generally speaking, nature it gives you great evidence. Uh, you know, in the fall, you're seeing the, the, the foliage dry up and fall from the trees. And you know that come springtime, those fresh buds are going to come and Things are going to get nice again, and that 
just kind of gives you the idea that that there's a caring, loving God watching over this place, because otherwise energy has no ability to regenerate itself. Mm. So, you know, like if you set a cup of hot coffee on that table, that coffee is energy, right? That, that hot water is energy. Left to its own devices, it cools off. It has no ability to regenerate that heat. Right. It's spent. What keeps this planet ticking? And that shows a loving, caring God that keeps regenerating this place so we have food to eat, shelter to, to shelter in, yeah, water to drink. That keeps telling me there's a God. That's encouraging. That's encouraging. Bob, how about you? Do you ever have those moments of doubt where you wonder if God is, is real, if he's out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to yeah. be the well, answer. <laughs> I've had too many God encounters. I mean, throughout my life that... I have no doubt. I mean, I yeah. just I just don't because uh, he speaks to me. I hear him. He's done so many things in my life that I know it's him. There's just no other way these things can happen. Yeah. And he continues to prove himself to me day every day. Yeah. So, sorry, I didn't. No, have that's to that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> How about you, Mac? Do you have moments where you doubt whether God is real? I I call yes, absolutely. And I think God likes it when I think that. Because I don't think God wants me to have blind, brainwashed faith. I think he wants to reveal himself to me as often as he can. Uh, How about you? What's your answer to that? 244-0077. Lines are open. Ryan will be taking the call. We're coming back live here on Max World Live on The Truth 99.3. This is KTIA, Iowa. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live.
21 minutes after 4 o'clock. High today of around 79, although that breeze is keeping it a little cooler. Uh, we should be in the 70s, maybe the upper 60s here this week. Uh, lows in the upper uh, 40s, lower 50s. Some of the best uh, open window sleeping weather you could ever get across central Iowa. All right, this is the all-new Max World Live here on 99.3 KTIA. Uh, website is maxworldlive.com, or you can go to, well, that just... Chris DeBolt, my genius, has got everything pointed to one site. And so uh, no matter what you put in now, you'll, you'll find that there. And so uh, today we're talking a little bit about uh, what I call proof of God moments. Um, and your voice is welcome in this conversation if you'd like it, uh, 244-0077. Do you ever doubt that God exists? And, and if so... What is it that convinces you once again, over and over, that he's present? And for some reason, when I find myself wondering, and it's interesting, Chris, because the farther I get into the Gospels, the, the, the more cynical I can become. It, it's not that I automatically become that, but I can, because now all these stories are being told, and they're all coming to life, and I'm learning the particulars of it. And I just, you know, I, I hear my atheist friends and they say, well, come on, God didn't write that book. It, man wrote that book, but it was God inspired. Well, but there is no God. So man wrote it. So we always get back to the point that there is no God. So how do you prove to somebody that there is no God? I'm sorry. How do you prove to somebody that there is a God? Um, and, and they want to go to science. Well, you know, science. Did you hear what Ben Carson said the other day? This was brilliant. What did he say? He said, now I got to think about this. I want to get this right. Actually, I should look it up because I put it on my Facebook. Right. I saw, I saw that also on Facebook. Wasn't that good? Here, let me, let, me, yeah. let me find it for a minute. I can find it here, too. All right, you find it. But, uh, and I don't know if Ben Carson said it. It was one of those memes. Is oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, sure. I, maybe I've seen, I have seen this, I think. I know what you're talking about. I, I just put it up on Friday. And I don't know whether he said it or not, but if he didn't say it, I want to say it. <laughs> sure. Because it's that good. Yeah, you have it, yeah. Bob? Not yet. I had it before. Now I think I had so many. See, I've got people like you that post and post and post and post. And so I have a whole ton of stuff. Well, let me see. Well, it, it was. it was. Is it on your page? Yeah. It was that uh, Ben Carson said that um, he believes that atheists uh, make fun of him because he believes in God and that he came from God. And so Ben Carson said, um, I believe I came from God and you believe you came from monkeys. I got it here. I'm beginning to think you were right. Yep. He says, and you, you've convinced me you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if you want to say you come from monkeys, go for it. But I don't know why you'd want to say that. Plus, Bob, didn't you and I talk about this once, how from a DNA standpoint, there's no way we evolved from another species. We've always been the human species. Yeah, there are very unique things within the DNA that, you know, even though there, there are differences, I mean, that's the way it is. And, and, and the fact is, they're still not evolving, the monkeys. Right. You know, I mean, they've been with us. So, yeah, yeah, DNA, and even though they've charted the entire DNA molecule, um, it shows that there are definite differences between us and every other living creature. So there's no way we evolved from them. No. 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 I, and I didn't. I'm just like, I'm with Ben. Yeah, <laughs> right. Frank, how about your ancestors? Well, <laughs> yeah. I would suggest if man had never forgotten the Sabbath, there would be no such thing as an atheist. Because if you track our ancestry back to the Garden of Eden... If man would have kept observing the seventh-day Sabbath every seventh day, there would have been no atheist ever because they would have always been reminded of creation and the Creator because that's what the seventh-day Sabbath was for, was for remembrance of creation. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, we've got, we still live, though, a seven-day week. Sure. I mean, our, you know, and that's like, I often say, people tell people that, you know, the seven-day week, where does that come from? It doesn't work uh, with the lunar calendar. It's an odd right. number. It's definitely a reflection of God's created order. Also, you've got um, the way that we date things, uh, the year that it is. It's 2000. You know, Mac always says, in the year of our Lord, 2015. You know, the world was radically changed 
uh, when Jesus came onto the scene. And the seventh day, the seven day work week uh, has been the practice uh, for as long as folks remember. So um, I would have to say that uh, that's not enough to convince atheists to worship God, though. I mean, you know, we've got we've got the seven. You and I can you and I can go back and forth on how we how we worship God and what day we worship God on. But the seven day week. No, uh, I wasn't. I wasn't suggesting that that would convince them. There's a Sabbath. I'm simply saying, had man not forgotten the Sabbath, it would have always been in their mind that it was a day to represent creation and the Creator. It was remembrance. Remember the Sabbath day. You know, for six days, and and the seventh day I rested. So it was a remembrance of the creation and God's creative power. So if man never would have forgotten that, then each generation would have, you know, there wouldn't have been such a thing as an atheist. Yeah, I don't know that we've forgotten that, though. But, you know, Mac, you, we were talking about earlier that what is it when a person doubts? You know, I, I find those moments where, where I doubt. And the atheist argument is appealing to me. The idea that there is no God is appealing to me. Um, those things become attractive to me at times in my life. And I think, well, maybe they're right. Maybe all the criticisms that they raise against God and the Bible and all these things, maybe that stuff holds water. And you know what's really weird? Sin, evil, wickedness is my God moment in a sense. For me... The ever-present reality, not just of evil in the world outside, but that's in my heart, that's in your heart, Mac, that's in Bob and Frank and Ryan, our listeners' hearts, that uncontrollable, unquenchable desire to do that which is wrong convinces me not only that there's a creator, but more importantly that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who spoke to Moses and spoke in and through Jesus Christ, who's the triune God of the Bible, that he's the one that exists because of the ever-present ever present reality of sin in our lives. Because he's the one who said that he created all things good and that we fell, and in that fall, we have the ever-present, uh, we have ever-present sin in us. And that is undeniable. It's in, it's in everybody. We chose to fall. We did. We did. And the, and the consequence of that is the ongoing original sin. I'm not saying that uh, I'm not saying that Adam and Eve didn't choose or that we don't choose to sin. I think we do. But I think that there is this. I wish that I could come up with a better word, but I can't. It's like this this presence to do evil, this desire. It's ever present in me that I want to do that which is wrong. Um, and that we see we see the wickedness. We see the wicked doing what is wicked and rejoicing in it. More and more. Uh, and that, to me, screams of the evidence of not just a creator, because I think, um, Frank, you're absolutely right. I think seasons, uh, nature itself points to creator, a creator. But I think sin points to a specific, a specific God, the and, way that we experience it. And I think where that sin manifests itself and, and any Armenian listening to me out there is going to have an issue with this. And you can call me and we can talk about it. I'm, I'm not saying I'm right. And I'm not saying you're wrong. But I just want you to think about this for a minute. Armenian people, uh, which I was one fully for a long time, now I'm not, I'm just not, I don't know anymore. I'm, I'm somewhere between Martin Luther, Calvin, and Armenian. I don't know where I'm at. But... Um, here's what I do know, and that is that sin is free will. There's nothing you can ever call free will that is of God. Because if it's of God, it's his will, not our will. That's, yeah, you know, um, I'm going to interrupt you. There's another way to look at that phrase of free will, and that is when um, your will is free, it's slightly different, right? Like what I was talking about is this idea that um, sin is ever present inside me. And that's my natural tendency. My natural tendency is to sin. And I'm going to go in that direction. That's the, the, the way that my face is always pointed is towards evil. But another way to look at the, the idea of free will is that my will becomes free when by the power of the Spirit through the work of Jesus Christ, I am changed 
my identity's changed, and now my will is freed to do that which is pleasing to God, which is in fact contrary to my will. My will would be to do wickedness. My will would be to do that which only pleases me, that which only I find acceptable, to heck with the rest of the people, to heck with anybody else. That's what my will would want to do. But if my will was freed to do what pleases God, that's contrary to my nature. And I believe that maybe that's another way to look at, well, at free will. Let's get back to this question of doubt. We all have them. But if you go back to the story in Genesis where God said, do not eat of this tree of knowledge of good and evil, there was no further explanation. Right. What would Bill Maher, the critical thinker, say? Well, uh, wait a minute. But why? Christ didn't eliminate doubt in a perfect environment with perfect humans that were walking with a perfect God. So what makes anyone think that uh, 6,000 years later that he would eliminate doubt? our doubt. It's about faith, what you can't see, what you can't hear. All right, let me let me ask this question, and this is a genuine question. I, I don't know the answer to this. It's, it's not rhetorical. Um, and some of you make, make fun uh, or, or think less of me because I don't know this. Uh, I'm, I haven't been hanging around this Jesus guy for very long, just about five years. Uh, you know my story. Before that, I was a God guy, and I didn't see any use for Jesus went to church on Sunday. We all got dressed up, put a little jingle in the in the collection plate. Once a year at the pancake dinner, I might volunteer, might, tried to get out of it, might. The idea to serve others was just, why, why, why? I'm here to serve me. Nobody else is going to take care of me unless I take care of me. And then in 2010, 2011, the hound of heaven just kept coming after me. Little by little by little. And in 11, he caught me, and it was the most amazing thing that has ever happened to me. I can't, I can't imagine, I don't even remember what life was like before that. I know I can talk to people and look it up, but I don't know. And that's why, you know, I believe so much in irresistible grace. Uh, I, I, I didn't have a choice to say no. I, I know I did, but I, I didn't. I was not aware of it. It, it's like you're choking and you're trying to bring in air and you can't because the tube is blocked. There's an obstruction in there. My obstruction to try to return to my old ways was Jesus. And he just would stand there with his arm out straight and his hand up with the fingers pointed up saying, halt, you're not going back there. I'm not going to let you. So didn't Jesus, I'm sorry, didn't God put a curse on man after Adam and Eve slipped? He did, right? Yes. All, the whole belly on your belly and you'll hurt when you have babies and you'll work the land, all right? So why does it surprise anybody that we are sinful by nature? He put a curse on us. Well, and I, I, I think because they don't believe what you just said. I don't think they believe that story. We were talking about this before the program began. There are people who are spiritual who believe fundamentally that humans are basically good, that our base nature is good. There are people that believe that humans are good. And so your story, what you believe, what I believe, what the Bible teaches is that we were created perfectly in God's image and that we rebelled against God and we were cursed. And in fact, uh, the one thing we know for sure is that one out of one people die. You and I, Mac, every one of us is going to die. That is a product of the fall. That is part of the curse. All right, we're going to uh, catch up here on the latest break and then come back. Uh, if you're a Craigslist user... I'm going to give you a big red sign, a big beware. Latest story coming right out of Des Moines. It's coming up next right here live in Max World on 99.3. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wonderscheid. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the service manager. Marketing director and client relations manager. Everything that we do 
is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu and some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. Twenty-two minutes before the top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News, and then Hank the Bible Answer Man. And Hank the Bible Answer Man is live. So you can call in to his show and ask him any question about the Bible that you want to. And I, I don't know, I, I guess I shouldn't, shouldn't say he's never been wrong because everybody's been wrong, but boy, he sure knows his stuff. So if Frank says something on this show and you just know he's wrong, <laughs> then you call up call Hank, up and say, I'm listening to KTIA, The Truth, 99.3 in Des Moines, Iowa, and that, that horses thing, Jack. Patoot. Huh? Yeah. Patoot. Frank said that uh, something bizarre and weird, and he'll tell you the truth. And I think if we get enough people to call in and complain about Frank, <laughs> uh, that'd be enough to like give him a day demerit. Well, right? how about yeah, a lot of people off. call up and say, "Go, Frank!" Oh, that'd be terrible. That'd be well. Terrible. Then maybe men. Then maybe Hank Hanegraaff would come to Des Moines and want to meet the great Frank. Well, that could well, be. Maybe we that we could work it that way too. Let yeah. me respond to your point you made before the break. And the Lord said sure, to the go serpent, ahead, "Frank, go take it. All right, it, it, Frank's World Live <laughs> Well, Sorry, it, boss. I wanted to go back to this question because you've done this. You're cursed more than the cattle and more than ever beast of the field. And on your belly, you shall go and ye shall eat dust all the days of your life. Well, that was the curse to the right. snake, right? I or will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So right there, Christ made enemies between Satan and man. That is the moral compass that we are given to fight depravity, total depravity, to fight to fight wrong. It's a conscience. It's, it's inside us. It's a conscience. Naturally, our human nature wants to do wrong, but we have a spiritual nature that we can tap into, which is our conscience, to lead us into the paths of righteousness. And that there it is, is that enmity that was placed between the serpent 
and Eve and between her descendants and the serpent's descendants. I think that'd be a whole fascinating show. Probably don't, I don't know enough about it, but I, you know, one of the things that is often debated in Christian circles, Mac, is that, is the idea of the conscience, that this discussion of what the conscience is. Um, I have, there are, there are people that I respect very much in my life that would tell you that the conscience is not spiritual. It is like maybe kind of like the way Frank is talking about it, something that is a part of who we are. And there are some people that would tell us that the conscience is really just what we call the Holy Spirit speaking to us. And I, I don't know that I have an answer. And it's something that's debated amongst Christians all the time. I can tell you there was a conversation, I don't know, probably a year ago, year and a half ago, sometime in one of my Bible studies. And I came to this surprising, it's not a conclusion yet because I haven't ended the thought process. Sure. But I came to the point where I think for 50 years I didn't have a conscience. It's possible. Well, I, you've, have you heard the phrase uh, seared conscience? Yeah. You know, I think that there is definitely a sense in which um, we can we can burn our conscience. You know, we can we can build a callus on it and it doesn't it doesn't we don't hear it so much. You know, uh, we can do enough bad things to where. We don't hear that voice in our head that says, hey, don't yeah. do that. You know, I, I, we just get I, comfortable with it. I mean, I, I did horrible things in my life and no more horrible than maybe somebody else out there. I'm not trying to make myself a badder person than anybody, badder, <laughs> badder person than anybody else. But I can tell you some of the things I did, I didn't have a conscience about it. Yeah. I think the only time I felt bad was when what? I got caught. And then it wasn't my conscience because I felt bad that I did it. It was my conscience because now my butt's in a sling because I got I did it and I got caught. I don't think I had a conscience. Now let let let's go let's go to today. I have something that is the opposite of what I used to have. To the point where I love this thing that sits in my life, and I'll tell you, some of it comes from recovery. Uh, okay. The, the okay. tenth step is, uh, and I, I won't get it for you verbatim, but basically when you realize you've done something wrong, promptly admit it. Mm. Promptly admit it. Um, you know, the, the crow is much better to eat when it's fresh. Okay? <laughs> sure. Yeah, um, I got that. And, and I'm telling you that you'd have to drag an I'm sorry out of me, mm. and then I was so belligerent when I gave it to you, it wasn't worth <laughs> going through the process. Now, uh, when, I, uh, uh, when I find myself saying something or doing something that would be hurtful, I, I just have to. I just have to right away. And so whatever it was that I lacked, I now have it. Well, what did I not have before? You didn't have the Holy Spirit. I did exactly. not. I, I did not. Huh? Exactly. You didn't have the Holy Spirit. I didn't have a relationship with my creator. Yeah. So, so how do you know when you do something wrong? How do you know when something is wrong? How do you know that? <clears throat> I, I don't know. I just know. I mean, I just... Holy Spirit conviction. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. You know, I... I and, and, and I, yeah, you know what, Bob, as I'm sitting here thinking, you're right, because I'm still learning things that I do wrong. I'm still learning uh, uh, my, some practices in business, um, some ways that I uh, work in a uh, secular, um, um, money-driven world i it sounds worse than i want to make it but better to sound worse and apologize than not enough and think i'm flimsy but and i'm still realizing now you know that's not the way jesus want me to act i figured out something last week last tuesday just hit me right between my eyes a friend of mine made a comment about something i had said and he he said now that's the old mac mm. and i thought well that that that's not the old mac that's just mac i mean he, he he's okay on both sides with that well guess what jesus isn't and and I don't know. that, And you're right. It's the Holy Spirit. My mom always used to ask me when I was a young lad, are you sorry because you're sorry, or are you sorry because you got caught? And King David was sorry because he was really sorry, and he went above and beyond, and that's why he was a man after God's own heart, because he went above and beyond the call of duty in the service of the Lord. He just didn't stop at what he thought he was required to do. He wanted to build that temple for God. He was going above and beyond. But everybody has to ask that question when, you, when, when you're repentant. Are you really repentant for being, you know, are you really sorry for being sorry, or are you sorry you just got caught? Yeah, see, I used to be sorry that I got caught. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then I'd, then I'd find some way, even though I was caught red-handed, you know, my hands in the cookie jar. I don't know if you've ever <laughs> sure. heard that term, but you, yeah. I caught you with your ha- red hands. Red-handed, I caught you. What cookie? What cookie? I didn't, <laughs> and then, in this amazement, earthly, fleshy um, uh, soul that I have, uh, I'd find some way to blame it on somebody else. <laughs> you know, and I, and I love... A buddy, the buddy of yours that says this to you quite a bit, the, the phrase, that's the old Mac, yeah. that is one of the most, <laughs> that, that way of correcting another Christian brother has to be probably one of the most biblical corrections you can ever hear. It's, it, it's Pastor Mike that says it more often. Oh, that, that, that's the old Mac Mac. Yeah. He says yeah. it twice, the old well, Mac Mac. Well, and you know what's, what's great about that is because that's the thing. In fact, uh, my pastor, uh, Wayne Larson, was just talking about that this Sunday when we, when we think about... Uh, the grace of the law, the grace of the Old Testament, the grace of the covenant uh, made between God and the people of Israel. We often think of it as, if you do this, God will do this. It, it was a posi- You were already the thing that God called you to be. It was now live your identity. And that's what I get from Mac so much is, the new Mac is this. The new Mac is kind and peaceable and patient and long-suffering and gentle and all of those things and has self-control and is respectful. That's the new Mac. That's the new roll off. That's that's the new Bob. That's the new Frank. That's the new Jesus. Well, all those things you just said, I don't work on. Right, right. But but he called. But he well, but he calls you those things, and that's your new identity. And and the great sin is that we don't that we don't live that way. Those are the gifts of the spirit. Gifts of the spirit, and we live as the old man. We live oftentimes as the old man who is not those things. Right, Bob? Do you agree with that, Bob? Or am I crazy? You're crazy. Um, I like it. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to still stick with it. No, I, you know, my thought was and is, how many times do we ask the Lord for his leading and guiding every day? Right. Every day. How many times do we say, well, for instance, Mac, you were in an accident today that wasn't your fault. Right. When you got hit from behind today, yep. what was your first thought? Um, I don't know. I wasn't angry. Felt sorry for the person who hit me, actually. Did, did there, was there any thoughts about the Lord during that time? I don't recall. I'd, I'd like to tell you, of course. Just cu- I'm just curious. What, what do we do when we're in situations, yeah. difficult situations? Where I, do we go? Who I don't talk recall. To? All right, we're going to take our last break. When we come back, I, I teased a little bit ago about Craigslist, but there really is a problem, and it's happening local, locally on Craigslist, and I'll fill you in on what that is as we come back live here to The Truth, 99.3. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coach with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live.
Ten minutes before the top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News, and then Hank, the Bible Answer Man, live from Winston, Salem? Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, Charlotte. North Carolina. And you can call that line and uh, ask him any questions you might have about the Bible. He is uh, incredibly knowledgeable. He's been doing that show like since... He's been him, doing that show for a long time. Did him the, and Moses get, go yeah. up and get the Ten Commandments? It was him and Moses, yeah. And, and Hank got a little tired, so... No, I have the burning you know, true, bush. True story about a guy we all know and love, uh, Van Harden, uh, who is, uh, he works at that little old radio station, uh, 1040 AM, yeah, WHO. Uh, stick. You know, Van, early on, got in love with radio, and he used to record on cassette or whatever, he used to record the Bible Answer Man radio program. Now, this was before Hank was on it. This was back in the Walter Martin days. So Van has been a, a listener of Christian radio for a really long time. He used to love the Bible Answer Man program. So no doubt Van will, Van will listen in. So you can think about Van while you're listening. And um, I did want to give out Hank's number because I know they start taking calls and pumping in that line a little bit early. So you, if you do have a Bible question and you want a really smart answer, uh, you can call 888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-
The other thing that's what? going <laughs> Michael Dukakis. Dukakis. That was uh, that was an interesting slip. Michael say? Damastis. Michael Damastis. You said Michael Dukakis. <laughs> wow, that was. Does anybody even know who Michael Dukakis is anymore? He ran uh, for president. <laughs> oh, the, that's right. The yeah. other thing that's interesting <laughs> is the Trump bus, which uh, sits different places around uh, the city, uh, was vandalized last week. But it wasn't just vandalized. They changed the wording on it to make it look like, uh, well, Trump is a tramp and other such things. So somebody didn't just paint over it. They decided they were going to uh, turn it into an anti, uh, an anti uh, Donald Trump thing. Wow. So it, they come out of the woodwork every place they can uh, just to try to make things more difficult. Hmm. Artist Dave Gleason explains his plans to take the bus and make it a mobile piece of art. Hmm. All right. Well, I thank you for listening today on our first uh, live Max World Live. It is your voice I want to hear. Uh, you don't need to necessarily call in with confrontation or to disagree. Uh, we try to pose questions from time to time, and you get the opportunity to answer those. Uh, but this is an interactive show, and as hard as you try not to call in to change that, you won't change that. I've done interactive radio most of my life, and so I hope you get comfortable enough at some point to pick up those phones and call in and tell us what your proof of God is or tell us who your favorite campaign uh, or uh, presidential campaign, uh, presidential hopeful is, sorry. And, of course, you're always welcome to call and tell Ryan what a good job he's doing because he's the one that keeps us on the air, keeps it sounding good, him and Gizmo in the first hour. So, I appreciate uh, appreciate all their efforts, Frank. Anything you want to add before we go? Any no, the word you words was looking of wisdom. The word you was looking for was candidate. Candidate. I feel like we're on password. <laughs> the word is candidate. candidate. Alex Trebek. No, that wasn't Alex oh. Trebek. Uh, password was uh, Alan Alan Ludden. Alan Ludden. Alan Ludden. Betty, See how old I am? Betty yes. White. Betty White's husband. husband right. Wow. Betty White's dead. Right. No. No. She's no. still, no, she's she's still, still alive. Kicking. Alan's okay. dead. So the password is candidate. 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 All right. <laughs> Have yourself a uh, wonderful time, and we'll see you tomorrow. Remember, I always ask you to do this. Uh, do you ever do it? I'm just curious. Has has my prompting over the last almost five years, five times a week, ever made you really think about somebody you need to forgive? Because, you know, when you won't forgive them, it's just poison that you're eating. Your, so you're ingesting poison. And, and I know you don't think it works that way, but God does. He doesn't want us to hold resentments. He wants us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And you may not love yourself very much. Well, then try to love your neighbor a little more than you love yourself. Try the gift of forgiveness. It's not their gift. It's not for them. It's for you. Try it. You know who you should be forgiving. The name's on the tip of your tongue. Because remember, as you forgive, you shall be forgiven. I'll see you in church.